Tēnā koutou te whānau o ihu karaiti. A, ko wai au, ko taupari te maunga, ko wai kato te awa, ko tainui te waka. Ko Ngāti Haua tōku iwi, ko Edamu Tamehana tara pipapi tōku tipuna. Ko Tawhera wa ko Rose oku mātua, ko Isaac Takitungane, ko Ruby Raumati Māka tōku ingoa. Ha, nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Whew, man, made it without crying this time. <laughs> hey, you know what? It's actually a privilege to be able to speak today. It's an actual privilege. Uh, and I don't take it very lightly. And I just want to appreciate the fact that this is a safe place for me to even introduce myself in Māori. That's exactly what I did. If you're wondering, that's exactly what I did. So I said greetings to you, Fano of Jesus. And then I introduced myself, so I'm originally from the Waikato, uh, that's on my dad's side, uh, and you know what, that's precious to me. You know, so a little town called Morrinsville, if you know where that is, most people bypass it, but that's where Jacinda Ardern comes from. So that little town there, that's where I'm from. Uh, and then another town called Matamata, some of you guys might know Hobbiton. So all of that region is my homelands. That's where I'm from, on my dad's side. And I do want to acknowledge my mum's side too. Uh, we're on that journey of learning and discovery on that side. And so my mum's also Māori. Uh, my mum is from Taranaki, Ngāti Mutunga, and Rātana. And we're on that journey together in terms of reconciliation. I also have a Pākehā side, and I want to acknowledge that as well, because that also helps to complete me. And so my Pākehā side comes from Scandinavia, <laughs> it comes from Norway. And so I'm even learning a little bit about that side too, just to help complete the picture. You know, it's funny how Jesus knits things in. He knits things in and he knits us into his story. And uh, I also introduce to you one of my tipuna, one of my ancestors, just one of them because like, I've got many and we could be here all day. But one of them that's important to me, and it's Wurimu Tamihana Tara Pipipi. And he's the one who, for our people up in the Waikato, encountered the gospel. And he held it strong. He held it strong. And so I'm proud to be of Ngāti Hoa. That's my iwi. I'm proud to be of Ngāti Hoa because we encountered the gospel. And we carry that gospel close. If it wasn't for them and if it wasn't for my parents, Tuffy and Rose, I don't know if I'd be here speaking this today. I am not just someone in isolation of my whakapapa, of the people who went before me. I am inclusive and a part of it, and I continue to tell our story. And that's really, really important. We are not in isolation of everything else that Christ has done, because we are the family of God, cool? And I just want to take this time now because we're live streaming and it's Dad's birthday today, so happy birthday, Dad. Um, I couldn't be there because I'm here, but love and appreciate you always and for standing in the gap for us as whānau. Um, also, I want to acknowledge, I did also introduce my brother, Isaac. He also lives up by my parents in Auckland. And so um, shout out to him too because we've done a lot of life together uh, and he's really close to me. And so I move into acknowledgements. We have a great pastoral team here at SALT. So great that they champion the cause for me. They champion the cause for you. They give us a nudge when we're like, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to talk. I don't want to speak. But they encourage and inspire people like me to do something I never thought I could do. And so I appreciate all of our pastors here today. And uh, man, who knows? Who knows what they're speaking into your life, what might come of it? We've got amazing pastors. And thank you, Pastor Seal. Yes, we used to go to school today, uh, together back in the day. I spent a little bit of time uh, in Whanganui, and that's where our paths crossed. Uh, and then after Whanganui, I came over to, back to Palmy, uh, and I went to university and found a job 
never left. So still here today. Is that cool? So this theme for the month has been about our family, our whanau. The best part about it is that you can actually apply all of these things to your actual family, like your bloodline, and they're good, solid values for all of us. But specifically, there's a special something that happens when the family of God, that's you and me, when we choose to follow Jesus, when we engage in that, there's some values that we hold close and we enact. And so two weeks ago, we had Pastor Russell. He was talking about our family serves. And it was an awesome message about getting ourselves out of the way and actually serving other people because it's about other people. And then last week, we heard from Pastor Nathaniel and he talked about our family gives. And he talked about how we give our talents, our time, our resources, our energy. Because it's all about the sake of others. It's all about other people. And so today, our focus as a family is on our family or our whanau challenges injustice. We challenge injustice. We don't shy away from it. It's something that we're called to do. You know what, and challenging injustice kind of sits nicely off the back of the last two messages because if you are giving and if you are serving, you're already doing something to push back injustice. You're already doing something that challenges injustice because we live in a world where there is injustice. And we are called to minister to that. We're not called to shy away, hide in our buildings. We're actually called to minister. But how do we do that? So we're going to focus on Jesus because in all of my study, learning, knowledge, and that's about that much, but in all of that, Jesus is the one that stands out to me. He is the ultimate when he challenged injustice. You know what? He challenged the status quo. He settled arguments. He gave people identity and belonging and purpose. He challenged oppression. He challenged ideologies, rules, and even religious leaders of the day. He didn't do it by walking over people. He didn't do it by causing harm to people. So how did he do it? He ministered in peace. He brought peace to every single situation he faced. You know, Matthew chapter 5, Jesus is talking. And there's a part in chapter 5, and it's known as the Beatitudes. And it's where Jesus speaks. And he's talking about the kingdom of God. And he says in Matthew 5 verse 9, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And here's Jesus, who's also known as the Prince of Peace, right? And so we've been, I didn't pick the songs, but we've been singing about this Prince of Peace. I didn't tell Seal what to say, but we've been talking about the Prince of Peace and how he ministers peace into every situation. This is the Jesus that I know. And so even before we're even here today, God's been weaving it through. We have to catch attention to something. We have to catch attention to it. And so he's been weaving it through and Jesus is saying, peacemakers are part of the family of God. It's actually a mark of God's family. It's a character that should be evident in God's family. Peacemakers are the ones that intentionally make peace. They are on mission, seeking out ways to minister peace into people's lives and situations. Peacemakers challenge injustice. Being a peacemaker is sometimes radical, uncomfortable, and that's because it cuts against the grain of people's comfort, position, power, possessions, It cuts the grain of all of that. It qualifies the unqualified, and it's based on a really, it's pretty much based on the word of God, in a nutshell, peacemaking. 
You know, Jesus walked around for his little time of ministry and he's walking around calming the storms. There's a story in there that he calmed the storms. He brought peace to the storm, said, hey, waves, you can shush. Hey, uh, <laughs> wind, you can shush too. Minister peace in a real practical way. You know, he healed the sick on numerous occasions. The blind could see. The woman with the issue of blood was healed. Paralyzed people walking around. He ministered peace to that situation. He raised people from the dead. He ministered peace to the woman caught in adultery. He healed a man on the Sabbath. And when the religious people tried to trip him up, he turns around and is like, is it not good to do good? Like, is it not good to do good? It's always good to do good, right? There is no wrong way about it. It is good to do good. And I love the way that he just challenges it so simply because we overcomplicate things. He fed the crowd of 5,000. Can you imagine if 5,000 5, people being hungry? And he's like, hey, let's feed them. And I don't know about you, but when I'm, um, when I'm at the table at home and we're about to have dinner and the food's out and after karakia, it's quiet. It's peace. Everyone's happy. <laughs> but the ultimate move in terms of peacemaking was Jesus defeated death. He defeated death. He reconciled, which has pretty much made peace between us and our Father in heaven and gave us the ministry of reconciliation to work matters out between ourselves. That's what he did for us. This is his message. This is why he's called Prince of Peace. You know, the Jesus that I described is the Jesus that my tipuna, my ancestors on both sides, came to know and follow. They were introduced to the gospel of peace and the ministry of reconciliation. You see, warfare between iwi and between tribes who had been at war for years found peace. To live in peace was a better way to live and it was led out by peacemakers who followed the teachings of Jesus. That's amazing. Thousands of Māori had converted to Christianity and missionaries were in short supply. Like, there wasn't even enough Bibles that were printed to keep up with demand. That's how crazy it was. Māori were evangelising to Māori and missionaries just couldn't keep up. It was considered a huge revival in our land. You know, that's part of our story as the whānau of God in Aotearoa. That is our story and we have to start remembering our story better. You know, I know stories aren't perfect. I know my story is not perfect. But uh, we can acknowledge, you know, our whole story as a whole. Yeah? We're game enough to acknowledge our whole story. And so a treaty was brokered in 1840, and it was hoped that it would bring peace and allow all people to thrive and live in harmony. However, after the signing of Te Tiriti o Waitangi and the subsequent and prolonged injustices and breaches of this covenant, because the Treaty of Waitangi, if you don't know, is a covenant. It's a God concept, right? In the face of all that, peacemakers rose again. Māori were suffering huge injustices of mass, land confiscation, disease, discrimination, systematic oppression, and horrific harm to women and children. Māori peacemakers again clung to the gospel and the example of Jesus to seek peace and the restoration of a covenant. There was hope that the missionaries and the churches of the day would also follow the example that was so often preached on a Sunday. There was that hope. Unfortunately, the church went silent. When an advocate was needed, it didn't come. Māori peace speakers were referred to as charlatans, 
rebels and traitors, all for speaking, speaking out against injustices that they were facing. See, I knew these would come in handy. Many Māori were heartbroken, felt betrayed. I know I've felt betrayed at times. It's not a nice feeling. And they walked away from Christianity because all they experienced were double standards. Now history is telling our story. History is telling the story of the church. And universities, because I sat in one and I had to listen to this, universities are making conclusions about how the church sided with the crown and allowed injustices to continue. They're questioning the motivation of the church and what was really going on. They were questioning this because at the end of the day, it was just a really poor example and representation of Jesus. It really was. And I know there's probably other pressures and things that went on, but actually we can do better. Our story doesn't end there. Our story can't end there. We've got too many other people that are coming up in the future. We've got too many generations coming up. I had to sit there in university and wrestle with this, wrestle with it by myself, because I didn't know where it fit. I'm a Māori, and our iwi is holding firm to the gospel, and I'm brought up in church. What do I make of this? I love the church, love Jesus, love my people. Where do I sit? So I had to wrestle with that. Sometimes I'm too Māori for some people and I'm too Pākehā for the others. Where do I sit? But the closer I get to Jesus, the closer I understand that actually to be a peacemaker in this situation is what we're called to do. And it's not easy. This standing up here today being vulnerable is not easy. I would have much preferred to sit there and let someone else talk about it. But I believe that actually today, we're not just listening about injustice, we are doing justice. And so here's my questions. Where are our peacemakers today? Where are the peacemakers that hold firm to the word of God and intentionally make peace? Where are the ones that heal the wounds of the past? Where are the ones that will fight for disadvantaged, broken, and unqualified? We are called to be peacemakers in all things, through all things. Yes, we have specific callings, talents, and passions, but Te Tiriti o Waitangi isn't just a side piece of the ministry of Christ in Aotearoa. It's not just a thing on the side that we just like sweep under the rug. The heart of our pastors here at SALT is that we, as the family of God, would rise to the call of challenging injustice, and that to do so is to take our place in our national story. We are called to pick up the mandate that was silenced to bring healing, restoration to people's lives, wholeness and peace. Covenants were never made to be broken. I, don't, I can't think of one covenant where I'm like, oh yeah, let's intentionally break that. Um, because we're, I would hope anyone entering into a covenant is doing it on good faith. You know, when I, even the mentioning of Tetiriti or Waitangi, I know, because I've been in some settings, and everyone just wants to like run away and like cause division, oh, like, what'd you bring that up for? It was awkward. And everyone can sometimes like run this way. But actually, covenant was meant to unite us. Covenant was meant to bring us closer together, not further apart. Whether it be in people, groups, families, marriages, covenants were meant to be things that unite us. When a covenant is outworked fully, all people flourish. Everyone. 
The generations will flourish. There is no win-lose. When we honour a covenant, there is no win-lose. There is only win-win. So my challenge is, can we, the church, carry this forward? Can we, the church, carry this forward? And I don't share this to be condemning. I share this with a lens of hope because I'm hopeful that actually the message of Christ, of peace, of reconciliation is the very message that we're called to carry as a church. We, we should be the best at it, not the worst. We should be leaders in this. Today, let, let this day be the day that you remember. You didn't just turn up for a message. You didn't just turn up to a message about challenging injustice. Today, as a whānau, we were actively pursuing justice, first by learning to understand the injustices and the context of Tiriti or Waitangi in Aotearoa, and further learning its place in our ministry. You know, I know that this isn't always an easy topic. And I know that there'll be some things that you may wrestle with, and that's okay. I would prefer that you did wrestle with them. Wrestle with matters of injustice. Wrestle with them. Seek God. Because it means that you haven't settled. When you're wrestling with things, it means you haven't settled. So you wrestle in prayer and with the Holy Spirit and seek out wisdom. We've got amazing people that we do life with that carry wisdom that can help us. You know, Jesus even wrestled. When he went to get crucified, he wrestled with that. It was not easy. But after wrestling with it, found strength and actually still chose to be the peacemaker for us, chose to reconcile us to Christ. You know, peacemakers also keep themselves in check. We have to be willing to check our blind spots, our biases, our justifications. And we have to ask ourselves the question, what would Jesus do? That's not some cliche thing that we just used in the 90s and 2000s. Hey, it's not a cliche question. What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do with Te Tiriti o Waitangi? Really? You know... I also want to challenge us all to keep learning, to keep learning, because in your learning to understand, you will continue to choose the path of peace. You will continue to choose the path of peace when you learn. And I know that this is just one area. There are so many other justice matters that need attention. I know that. I see it on the front line. But it is important for us here to start here. A foundational document of Aotearoa that belongs to all of us and allows for all of us to have place here. Romans 12 verse 18. If it, is at, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Live at peace with everyone. You know, the world's watching how we treat each other as a family. The world is watching. And I know, I was like, oh, yeah, let's see, trip up. How do we trip that up? They're watching how we live peacefully with one another. It's a marker of the family of God. It really is. And so that's my challenge that I leave for all of us, me included. I'm part of this. I'm on the journey and I wouldn't be doing it justice if I didn't acknowledge that people were in different places and spaces. But I would much prefer to be on the journey. You know, this has been a journey of learning for myself, a journey of learning and unlearning and relearning again. You know what? I'll probably continue to do that all my life. 
It's good for us. It's good for us. I asked the question, I had it written down here, can we, Salt Church Fano, be peacemakers? And if you're, letting, if you're willing to let the Holy Spirit move, I believe you can. Matthew 5, verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the call that you've got for Aotearoa that you saw us long ago. We thank you for our people here today, our nation, Lord God. Would you continue to do a work? Would your peace reign in our relationships, in our nation, in our workplaces, in the matters concerning the treaty? Would your peace lead us, guide us, keep us safe? Lord, we welcome you to do a fresh work in our lives. We thank you, Lord, that you're still writing our story as a nation, that it's not over in the bad times, but Lord, your call is to restore us. Your call is to redeem us. Your call is to reconcile us first to the Father and then to one another. And so Lord, we stand on your word and we ask for you to move. Thank you, Lord. Now with our heads bowed and eyes closed, I can't talk about the peacemaker without giving the opportunity to anyone who's here today who has not made a commitment to follow Jesus. There might be stuff going on. And maybe it's time to invite the Prince of Peace into your situation. To make a commitment to following a new way of life, a new way of living. So I want to extend the invitation to make that commitment to follow Jesus. It's real simple. All you have to do is raise your hand and I'm going to lead you in a prayer. I'm going to lead us all in a prayer. And maybe you've made that decision before, but actually you walked away and you're like, nah, I feel like I need to recommit that, recommit my life back to God, back to Jesus. Then I invite you to also lift your hand, give me a wave, I'll see you. We don't let you go out alone. We want to do it together as a whanau. We want to do it together. Maybe you haven't raised your hand, but actually, you're like, oh, nah, I'm not ready for that. But I believe if you pray a prayer with us today, and you meet it in your heart, God sees that. Is that cool? So if everyone can repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I recognise I need you. Forgive me for doing life my own way. I need your peace. I give you my life. I want to follow you. Would you lead me and guide me? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can we give it up for Jesus? You know, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, then I welcome you to come and make yourself known. We'd love to get to know you, knit you into the whanau. Weave us together because we're all better off together. Cool. And finally, in closing, before I hand back to Seal, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for allowing me to be me. This is partnership. This is 
honouring the treaty. And so we did justice. We didn't just talk about it. Is that cool, church? Cool. I'm going to hand back to Pastor Seal. Kia ora.